My name is Rebecca Honig and I'm from the Philadelphia Museum of Art Education Department and I'm going to respond to the first question which was what will be the next generation's experience of museums? How is this different from your experience as a child? And all the questions were wonderful and, and thought-provoking but this one just immediately spoke to me. Um, of course, as we all know, in the future there's going to be a lot more technology. Uh, the interactives will be technologically uh, more complex. There's probably so many things we can't even imagine now that will be created in the years to come. Um, a lot of virtual experiences. Um, and I'm old enough to remember when we had virtually no virtual experiences. Uh, except I do remember at the Philadelphia Zoo having this plastic zoo key that cost a dollar. That was a big you know, expensive item that you had to beg your parents for and then you put it in the little slots and you could hear something more about the animals. And that was exciting, but it wasn't, you know, sort of the main reason for your visit, although it was very exciting when you earned one of those and also were able to find it before you went to the zoo again. Um, but I, I really feel that it's a kind of universal, eternal thing that museums hopefully will always have direct experiences with direct objects um, from the past, whether it's a Renaissance painting or um, a dinosaur skeleton, that that ultimately, looking at something that's from you know 500 years ago or a million years ago, is what really fuels the imagination of a child or an adult for that matter, um, and allows the viewer a truly one-of-a-kind experience that cannot be duplicated because it's it's sort of like reading a book versus watching a movie. You can make the character look any way you want when you're reading the book, whereas when you see the movie, a certain actors or actor is playing that character and it may or may not um, be the way you imagined it. So I guess that's all I have to say.